And my bird's bite's free and my cars are natter. Loads of money is a shout I utter as I wave my wand and the kids is in the gutter. <laughs> Let's meet the creator of Loads of Money, a young man with loads of talent, Harry Enfield. You don't, you don't look a bit like him in the real. No, thankfully. <laughs> the tr that's the problem. I mean, he is horrible. He's ghastly. I hate him. He's, he's crude. He's crude, vulgar, rude, and... Um, Thoroughly unpleasant, selfish, nasty, and hopefully exactly the opposite of me. Where did you find him? Where did I find him? Yeah. Well, uh, a friend of mine, Paul Whitehouse, who writes for me, was a plasterer, and he used to come home with all these sort of horror stories about people like that. And, but we should uh, explain for those who haven't seen him, yes, I'm sure an awful lot of people he have, but he, was. He, he plasters and he, and he, right, and he asks cash for the job. He's a he... plasterer, and he goes, loads of money for being a plasterer! And he's just loud, and you don't care about anybody else, just me. And he's horrible, and he sort of thinks that, I don't know, the health service should be closed down and all the money be given to me! <laughs> he's just a very selfish man. And he piles it all up, and have you got the wad? I'm afraid I haven't, haven't got, got the wad. No. You don't look the same without Well, I'm sort of out, out of character, so um, <laughs> that's why I haven't... I know, I mean, I don't want to come heavy about it, but I know you're a, a, a graduate, you, you've got a degree in politics. Yeah. I mean, is this kind of a social comment, as they say? Well, yes, I mean, that's how he started off, and that's what I think he still is, really. But, um, I mean, I see him as, as Mrs Thatcher without the elocution lessons, but that's a bit political. <laughs> I know a lot of people disagree with me about that, and they're entitled to... Uh, but it is a whole philosophy of you are what you earn. I mean, that's what he is. Yes, he is. I mean, it's a, I'm a bit sort of middle-class lefty who thinks that one should have culture and um, one should be able to express oneself. But in the modern society, under whatever government, um, it's more and more geared towards earning money. That's the pure goal, and you buy things with your money, and you are what you buy. The irony rather than you is... are what you do, like play the piano well, or Well, right, whatever. but the irony is everybody loves him. I mean, I don't know why, but well, they I love don't know, you see. I think... I mean, people have said this to me. Don't you think you've created a monster here that, they, that people worship? But my hero was Rick Mayle, who, when he was doing Rick, he was nasty, arrogant, hypocritical, a coward, and uh, just everything. And I used to go around the whole time going, uh, and being a prat. And it didn't... And I, it meant I, I liked the character, but it didn't mean that I wanted to be like him. And I think that people like going, loads of money, because it's, it's probably the easiest impression you can do. You can... you just shout, loads of money! And really anyone can it's do It's on the that, football so. terraces across the land. I mean, if you dislike him so much, are you going to throw him in? Are you going to kill him off? Well, I think he will be killed off, but not really for that reason. I think people will get terribly bored of him, probably, um, after a few months. He'll be like it's... a song. You know what it's like when you get sort of tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree on your brain <laughs> for two years? I have to um, say, uh, I much prefer Stavros. Good. So, or, or women do tend to. Do they? This is a, a bit of a sexist comment, but I think he's, it's... He's a lovely sort of Greek. Where did you find him? Well, he's actually a friend of mine. Um, he was my local kebab owner, Adam Athanasio. <laughs> Adam Athanasio, when I was in Hackney, and he had the kebab shop in Well Street in Hackney. And uh, he's just a very nice chap, and he was very funny, and we used to go in there. I used to go in with a friend called Al, who is economical with words, to say the least. Like, if he was here now, you'd say, Hello, Al, how are you? And he'd go, Reasonable. <laughs> Yourself. And I'd say, well, I'm fine, thank you. What have you been up to? Not much. Um, <laughs> did you go home at the weekend? Negative. And we used, to, we used to go down to Adam's shop, and I'd go in and he'd say, hello, my friend, and for you? <laughs> and I'd say, I'd like a large donut, please, Adam. And he'd say, and for you, my friend? To Al and Al would go, likewise. <laughs> and when I went in on my own, Adam would say, hello, my friend, where is likewise tonight? I don't see him. <laughs> And he's actually, if people, if people want to see Adam, he is, uh, he's actually on Jonathan Ross' show tonight at, uh, on Channel 4. I shouldn't advertise that, but the real, the genuine... The real one? Yeah, I'm he's, going to sit in the audience there. It's going to be he's good very fun. good, actually, isn't he, at Im it impersonating... I mean, I'm talking about Stavros, at impersonating other people. It's a weird combination, to. because you've done Stavros impersonating Derek Jameson. Yes, I think I have. How does that go? Let me think. <laughs> Do I mean us? They surely do, innit? <laughs> someone like that. Uh, someone like that. It's actually, it's 
Thank you. It, it's a slight cheat because I used to do voices for Spitting Image. Who and did so, you do that? Uh, David Steele. <laughs> Little David. Oh, so I've wet myself again. <laughs> and um, I don't know, all the horrible people, people like Leon Britt. <laughs> <laughs> And sort of uh, Jimmy Hill, Jimmy Greaves, Ken Livingstone, <laughs> Mick Jagger. Uh, oh, I think my favourite was Douglas Hurd in the last series, I think, because uh, really I'm not an impressionist. And because the puppets are so me. horrible, and you, if you did a proper impression of how people talk, they wouldn't really work. For instance, I mean, someone like Douglas Hurd in real life sort of talks like that with a very slight growl in his voice, and he goes on about whatever he does, banning programmes on the IRA or whatever. So on Spitting Image, because the puppet looks like an ice cream cone, <laughs> the voice wouldn't really work, so you have to sort of take it up and just shout, hello, Sue! How are you? I think you are the puppets. I think we should see the face. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is there? There's a new chap I haven't seen. There's a, there's a, a uh, Geordie. I, he's called Booger All Money. <laughs> Pardon my French for this time of the evening. And he's a Geordie, right? And he drinks beer. I drink beer and smirk tabs. <laughs> Which is the Geordie for fags. And um, he was really to counteract loads of money because I suddenly sort of thought, well, the programme was rather southern based. And uh, he was, I thought, well, do people in the north know what loads of money's like? Do they go to their pub and see all these sort of ledge with their woods like that? And I <laughs> thought, well, they probably don't. So I better do something you know, for, for northern people. So I rang up a friend of mine, Chris Donald, who, who writes Viz Comic, is the editor, um, which I love, and he's got characters in that who are a bit like Booger All Money, and said, would you write it? So he did. And, well, he wrote it and me, and then he translated it all into Geordie for me. So instead of saying, I don't, don't know what you do on a Friday night, which is what I've written, is, I do even know what you do of a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Every word is different on that, you know. <laughs> And Ollie Legs doing us punching people's face on that. <laughs> he's, a, he's a bit of a lad and he wears cut t shirts, and you know, even in the midwinter, he's got his cut t shirt on he's and his terrible. embassy regal under the sleeves. <laughs> and he goes out and says, Did you call my pint a woman? <laughs> and, <laughs> and can I ask you the question of the evening? I mean, presumably you made loads of money out of all of this. Uh, well, mm, not yet. Mm -hmm. in fact, they all duck this one, don't they? No, Do you I'd, notice? They all have their I would actually like to put the <laughs> record straight. For some reason, one of the papers um, quoted a fee that I got for gigs, which is actually a 90th of what I get for any gig. And um, It's not bad, though. They just sort of make it up. I, I know. These I press know. people. Yes, I don't know. They? Yes, Especially we won't get current. into that now. No. We get into terrible trouble, but yes. we won't discuss it. Just tell me Sorry. the future. Being told off. No, I'm not being told off. <laughs> Was I, was I doing my strict act? I'm yes. sorry. It's we just, won't talk about we that. We won't no, talk thank about you. that. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm going to shut you up in a minute. <laughs> Except that I seem to get the impression that you want to do all of this very quickly, make a lot of money and get out quick. Is that right? Um, well, I, I don't want to stay in the business for too long because mm. I think... I think comedians should be more like pop stars because if they go on too long on telly, people get bored of them and they get another series and another right. one. And I want to get out before people get right. bored of me. We've got to me. get out now. Thank okay. you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Harry Enfield. Thank you.